Hi, my name is Sunny Chapman, and I am here today to read chapter one of my new book, Rich in Love, 10 Powerful Mindset Shifts to a More Abundant Life in Every Way. I am doing a reading of chapter one, and this chapter is entitled Mindset Shift One, Trust Yourself, Trust Life. Quote, I had a feeling it would be there and I followed it. No map, no directions, no authority. Knowing if it wasn't there, I'd find it soon enough just by moving. End quote. So trust yourself, trust life. This mindset shift comes first for a reason, because you won't be able to make any of the other shifts in this book unless you begin to trust yourself and life more than you ever have. We have all been taught in a thousand ways not to trust ourselves and our own intuition and inner guidance. We have been trained to follow what we've been told and what we've seen others do. We've been taught to follow suit and stay in line. We have been taught to trust others and not ourselves and to ignore our own innate wisdom in favor of theirs. But this all ends starting now. The way to the life of your dreams is hidden in you like buried treasure. Every being has this treasure map within them and nobody knows the way to your own treasures but you. But unlike following a treasure map, you will not find the way outside of you. You will unearth it from within you. It emerges right out of your own soul and your soul's unique blueprint. Other people won't know the way to your treasure either, not me or anyone else. However, they may help you discover your own way and help you unlearn the distrust of yourself that you have taken on over the course of your life. In this book and in my Feast or Famine No More course, that is exactly what I aim to do. To put you in touch with your own brilliance about your life path and the way to all of your dreams coming true. Any teacher, guide, or mentor you choose should do that, and only that. If anyone tells you they know the absolute right way that you must do things and wants you to follow them, even if it is to the detriment of your own inner voice, whatever they are offering is not for you. Choose mentors and guides who help you find your own truth and follow that. An important thing to remember as you begin to do this is that the more you learn to trust yourself, the more reasons you will have to trust yourself. It's like one of those old-fashioned balancing scales with a tray on each side. One of the hanging trays is marked distrust and the other is marked trust. There may be a bunch of stones on the distrust side right now, But each time you make a move in the direction of your own truth and find that you are safe and feel the sweetness of that, you move one stone over to the side of trust. And the more you do that, the more that trust stacks up until one day the balance of the scales completely tips in a new direction. That trust will help you make every move and decision you need to make. Other people may help you find your own answers, but they never have your answers. Even the most well-meaning, loving people in your life will not see what you see or feel what you feel. And so you must cultivate this trust in yourself above all. The wonderful thing is... The more you trust yourself, the more you trust life. And the more you trust life, the more you trust yourself and vice versa. 
you may wonder which one you should focus on trusting more or trusting first, yourself or life. The truth is, it doesn't matter because in actuality, they are one and the same. You are life. Life is you. And you can trust the infinitely creative intelligence of your soul, which is the very soul of life. Both are you and both are life. The power of this trust is unspeakable. So even if you do none of the other steps in this book, do this. Learn to trust yourself and life and it will be more than enough. It will assist you in doing all of the other things of your life more naturally and with ease. So how do you begin to trust yourself then? And which voices in the head do you trust anyway? Because as you may have noticed, your own mind says things that are constantly in conflict with each other. So not only do you have a world of, quote, experts and guides out there who say conflicting things from each other, but you also have your own mind and thoughts saying conflicting things too. One minute your mind says go, and the next minute it says stop. One minute it says do this thing right now, and the next it says don't do that thing ever. (laughs) One minute it says you love a person or a thing, and the next minute it says you can't stand them. This is no different from trying to listen to the many teachers and other people you look to outside of yourself who all say different things about what is right for you. It's all going on in your own head all the time, too. And it's enough to drive anyone completely crazy. If your mind took the form of a person standing next to you and saying all this out loud, all the conflicting things that it says to you internally, you would think they were absolutely nuts and get away from them as quickly as you could. And you'd most certainly not be asking them for life advice. This is why the first step to learning to trust yourself is to begin to disidentify with the mind and all of its circular, constantly conflicting thoughts and to bring a new level of awareness and spaciousness into the thinking mind so that you can begin to hear your heart and your intuition. Your heart and intuition are the voices of your soul and higher wisdom. And their guidance will always feel like peace to you. But that can be really difficult to hear over the constant screaming and contradictory chatter of the mind. So it is absolutely vital that you begin this process by learning to recognize the difference between the two. And the way you do that is by beginning to notice how it feels. The mind and its thoughts are like a giant pendulum, swinging back and forth between extremes all the time. One day it is high, and the next it is low. One moment all is well in your world, and the next you're in disaster. Something happens, someone says something, you see something that triggers you, and you swing from light to dark. One moment you're living a sweet life and the next you're in utter hell. And the span between those two realities can happen in the blink of a thought. The mind tends to feel very up or down, very left or very right, while the voice of your heart and deeper wisdom will tend to feel steady and centered. That voice is much quieter. So you have to still your mind to be able to hear it. But the mind will often make an awful lot of noise to keep you from hearing that deeper, simple wisdom. And after you do hear it, the mind will probably make a lot more noise (laughs) to keep you from believing and following that wisdom. The mind tends to make decisions based on its framework of what is right and what is wrong or how things will seem to others instead of what simply feels right and good to you, regardless of how that may look to other people. 
and regardless of whether you think it will even work. Your deeper wisdom will usually be simple and peaceful. And even if it reveals a complicated next step, you will simply feel deep down that it is the next right thing for you. Decisions should always come out of that peaceful place and not the fight or flight response of the mind. And as you learn to feel the difference between the two, this will get easier and easier. How you begin to disidentify with the mind is to simply notice the thoughts and feelings floating through your mind all day long, every day. By noticing, you begin to bring awareness. And awareness expands the spaciousness between you and the thoughts and feelings. It sounds simple because it is. And the only reason it's hard is because we're used to being completely absorbed in our minds and feelings and having no spaciousness whatsoever around them. There are different ways that you can practice this and anchor it in, including meditation, mindfulness, and any other practices that help you get out of your head and into your body more. The goal is to get to the point where you don't immediately believe every single thought that goes through your head and you begin to notice how thoughts affect you. You allow them to be there without fighting them, but you don't take them as absolute truth. You just follow the ones that feel right and good to you from a more calm and centered place. And this is a practice. You've been practicing not having any spaciousness in your mind your whole life, perhaps. So it will take some practice to retrain it in something new. If you're looking for further resources to help with this, I personally credit meditation, the work of Eckhart Tolle and Byron Katie, and simple quiet walks in nature for my own journey out of my head and into my heart and the flow of intuition. Nowadays, you can put the Calm app on your phone and take 10 minutes a day or less to practice this with one of their daily trips or meditations. It is so easy to anchor practices like this into your life once you decide and commit to doing so. And daily practice will not only help you decipher your path to abundance more easily, it will bring a greater peace and freedom to your life than you have ever had before. One of the other major keys to trusting yourself and life is knowing you will be able to handle things whether they work out or not. You already know that some situations work out perfectly in life and some do not. That already happens all the time in your life, whether you're doing what you truly desire or not. Even if you just do what's expected of you and what's more safe, sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. You could still lose the job or the client or the money or whatever it is, whether you take the risks or not. And when you look at the things that don't work out, you often see, if you really are looking closely, how they led you straight into new situations, relationships, or ways of being that worked out better. And if you look for that, you will always find it. Because what you look for, you find. If you look for evidence of doom and failure, of course, you'll find that too. Because again, what you look for, you find. But no matter which you choose to focus on, the fact is you're okay. If you are holding this book or listening to this book, you've made it through all manner of wins and losses. And you're still here. And you're okay. And if you're not loving the way things are for you right now, This book will help you choose and hone your focus so that you can create more of the life you love with ease and joy. As you learn to feel the difference between the voices in your head and the voice of your heart and soul, 
you will begin to naturally trust that voice more than the others and to step out in that direction with intention, knowing that you will be held no matter what. If you do not currently feel or know you will be held no matter what, stay with me. (laughs) The rest of the chapters in this book will help you to know it and to create more experiences of it in your own life so that you can trust it and yourself even more. A story of learning to trust myself. So the first time I was called to trust myself in a way I never had before was when I decided I was done being broke. (laughs) Done working job to job, client to client, paycheck to paycheck, struggling to keep up, much less get ahead. I was 35 years old and I had just spent the previous five years of my life healing my body and soul successfully and peacefully from a 12-year battle with bulimia. The eating disorder behaviors were healed in the very first year when I turned 30 and the subsequent years were the continued awakening and healing of my soul from this long-standing pain and feast or famine pattern in my life. I was then ready to end that same feast or famine cycle in my relationship with work and money too. I had no idea how I was going to do this at the time. All I knew is I was done. Done putting up with just getting by. Done living in survival mode. Just done. All I knew was that I was ready to have true stability and plenty in my life. And that's all I could see for myself at the time. Just stability and plenty. (laughs) Nothing more specific than that. It was the most I could hope for or allow myself to dream from where I was at that time. But I did dream it. I dreamed of stability and plenty. I was doing okay financially at the time. I had been in business for myself for nearly 15 years by that point, and I'd grown my business steadily over the years and did fine for myself. By many accounts, you could even say I did very well. But still, there was never enough. It was constant feast or famine. There would be an influx of clients and money or projects, and then nothing for months. Or something would come up and all that money would get wiped out. I just couldn't get ahead. Prior to my healing from my eating disorder, I'd had nearly $70,000 of credit card debt, a fact of which I'd been deeply ashamed. But thanks to my newly healing mind and body, I'd started experimenting with money mindset and manifesting and had managed to pay off every cent of that debt in less than three years. Something that had been utterly unimaginable to me before then. I had been sure I would be in debt for the rest of my life or we would just have to go bankrupt to get out from under it. But I didn't. I paid it all off without missing a single payment. Still though, I had to go, I had next to no savings or safety net. So every project and client or lack thereof could make me or break me. What once felt okay to me which was living with that level of instability and constant insecurity, suddenly did not feel okay to me anymore. I'd stacked a few stones over to the trust side of the scales when I'd set my mind to paying off that debt, and I did it. And so I had enough belief in myself at that point to try for a bigger goal this time. A goal that, as I said, I didn't really believe was possible, but had an absolute fire in me to create, which was that stability and plenty I mentioned before. I wanted a stable, reliable flow of plenty of money while still being free and continuing to be my own boss. That idea just sounded and felt like absolute heaven to me when I imagined it. So I set myself a goal number and I set myself a goal feeling at the same time. I told myself it would be easier, not harder. I told myself it would be like clockwork. 
that, quote, money would come in like clockwork. I felt the ease of those deposits coming in before I saw them. I set the intention and let go of exactly how it would show up or who it would show up through. But that was not the piece that required the real trust. Not that much anyway. Not the kind that really stretched me. That would come next. For me, that opportunity came next in the form of a $10,000 investment in myself. I had never really invested in myself or my business at all before, much less to that degree. And there was no guarantee of return on that investment either. It was going to be $850 a month for a year, and I had no idea where it would come from at that time because I certainly didn't have an extra $850 lying around every month, and the payment was nearly as much as my mortgage at that time. The investment was for an online business course, but this investment and the power of it had nothing to do with the program itself. Did I get a lot from it? Yeah. Yeah but not because of the content. By far the biggest gift and takeaway I got from it was trusting myself to make a decision like that. Trusting myself enough to actually invest in me and what I wanted. And in doing so, trusting life to show up for me and trusting me to show up for life. And that level of trusting myself turned into a whole new reality for me. That year, I more than tripled my income and suddenly had multi-thousand dollar deposits going into my bank account on auto draft like clockwork every month, just like I'd said, just like I'd intended. I go more into the details of all this in the following chapters and in my Feast or Famine No More course, but the stability and plenty that I had envisioned emerged. It became real right before my eyes. I don't even remember anything that was in that course I bought, honestly. It was simply the fact of trusting myself and investing in myself that made all the difference. First, I had started to take myself more seriously and respect myself more because of the body healing that I'd done in the prior years, which led to attempting to pay off the debt in record time and doing it, which led to this decision to invest more in myself and my bigger dream, which demonstrated a whole new level of self-worth in action. My investment in myself paid itself back many times over. Like a domino effect, it all added up and came back not just as money, but as greater peace, joy, and love. But that was just the tip of the iceberg, because that new level of self-worth and love reflected back to me not only in the money, but in the kinds of clients that I received, which led to easier and more mutually respectful client relationships. That year and that decision also opened up an unexpected brand new healing process for me too. And the miracle was that this newfound stability and plenty with ease was right on time to support me through that healing. So as I moved through processing some messy inner stuff and some deep fears and anxiety and sadness that I hadn't really dealt with in my past, I didn't have to worry about money or getting jobs that entire time. I had the time and the space and the freedom to fall apart if I needed to. It was as if life was paying me to heal further. And it has kept paying me and growing me in new and increasingly mind-blowing ways ever since. But this was just the beginning of my learning to trust myself and trust life. I am still on that journey, and I always will be. Each time rising a little higher on the infinite spiral of possibility. Trusting myself despite any and all flops on the way has and continues to be the best decision I have ever made. And the most rewarding one. 
not just in money, but in the ever-expanding deep well of peace that it cultivates within me each time that I do. I cannot imagine what my reality would be right now if I had not trusted myself to take those first scary and tenuous steps, not knowing if I really could or should. I am so glad I chose to fight for me and what my heart wanted, and I wish that for you too, my friend. Which brings us to the next chapter, Follow Your Heart. But before we do that, let's do this chapter's exercise. This is a self-trust exercise. So if you feel called, take the following prompt to your journal. Number one, what is one thing that you've been wanting to do, get, or try that you have put off or don't think you can have, big or small? What if you allowed yourself to be fully supported in it instead? This could be something super simple and small or something really big or both. In fact, I recommend thinking small and big with this, but whatever it is, make it a stretch. An example of something small might look like the following. You've really been wanting to get yourself some nice bath salts or face cream, but it seems unnecessary and it seems like it would be smarter to spend the money on other things but you get it for yourself anyway and you trust that you are worth it no matter how small or impractical this decision may seem or silly by making it you're sending yourself a message about your deservingness that matters and it's cumulative That could be with anything small. It doesn't have to be with bath products. (laughs) The same exact thing goes for something medium-sized or something huge. For everything from trying a new hobby to starting a new class or a new business, set your intention that the money for this investment in yourself will come back to you with ease. Write that intention down. It makes it more solid. And then let it go. And just do whatever you feel called to do next. If you don't know what the next thing is, no problem. Just wait until you do. And trust those in-between times. Those are just as important. Make this a regular practice with things both big and small. It will change your life. As you see yourself do small things and then survive and thrive despite your doubts, you will begin to trust yourself to do bigger things. And the possibilities are truly endless. Thank you for joining me of chapter one of Rich in Love, 10 Powerful Mindset Shifts to a More Abundant Life in Every Way. You can buy the book on any and all online booksellers or go directly to sunnychapman.com forward slash rich dash in dash love dash book. There will be a link in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to this channel for my Mindset Magic weekly posts, which go up every Sunday morning. Thanks for joining me. 